everybody. So today's 32 degrees outside. It's gonna be a real fun workout. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see if I if I can manage to to keep it through without completely losing all of my my hydration through my sweat that's gonna be pouring off my face, I am sure. So if you are going to work out with me this week, I highly recommend you have a towel to wipe your face off with and definitely keep hydrated so that you don't have a headache or something bad after this workout. But it's just gonna be a normal workout. Grab your weights, grab your chair, make sure you have some water with you, and let's get started. So if you need the chair for balance, feel free to use it. Otherwise, we're gonna get you to bring your knees up nice and high to loosen up those hips and the knees, core is active, shoulders are back. Don't forget to breathe. Right now, the air is hot to breathe. I <laughs> haven't, even, haven't even started yet. This is gonna be, oh, so fun. All right, it's, I'll burn lots of calories. You know, you lose water weight in the very least. I'm gonna use you doing some butt kicks, so make sure you don't smack anything behind you when you're doing these guys. You are trying to get as far back as possible with those heels. You don't have to touch your butt when you're doing the butt kicks, but you are trying to feel the stretch right in the front of the thigh. And I'm gonna slow that on down. Feet are about hips distance apart. They can be a little bit closer if you'd like. I want you to reach down as far as possible towards the ground, and then when you reach up, squeeze those glutes. So you're gonna to touch down and then up nice and high. You can work your way into this. You might just start going down and then up like this or as low as possible. Make sure you bend into the hips first and the knees follow you. Try not to bend the knees first like this because then the hips have nowhere to go. Hips go back, knees follow, okay? Down and up just a few more times. And the next one, you can have a nice wide stance, arms up at shoulder height, doing core twist, side to side. Don't forget to lift up that heel, because I don't want you to hurt your knee. Oh, just came back from camping, vacation, which was not that good for weather, so I didn't get a lot of swimming in. I was hoping you can get some cardio. Um, you know, on the weekend, but that didn't happen. Instead, I had lots and lots of ice cream. <laughs> and you can do some arm circles. So make sure you enjoy your ice cream, everybody, because it is summertime. The heat is here. You enjoy every second that we have of it. And I am here for you the whole time. For you to burn off those calories. And then uh, deal with it a little bit more in September when the weather starts to get cold again. Let's not talk about that. You're gonna turn those arm circles into bear hugs. So it's the back motion that is gonna feel that stretch in the chest and in the shoulders, possibly a little bit in the biceps. So try and get that feeling in the front of the, in front of the body. A few more times. And good. I'm gonna get you to roll the shoulders a few times. This will loosen up the traps, the trapezius muscles on the top of your shoulders but it'll also, once you bring those shoulders back and down, you're gonna, it'll also help loosen up your neck muscles. So once you tilt your head to the side, I want you to feel that stretch in the side of the neck and then switch to the other. Breathing into it. Hold for about five seconds and then switch back to that first side. And then the second. And come back up. Shoulder circle a couple times, loosen up, and feel free to have some water. As always, if you have music, go grab it, play it while we're doing this workout um, so you can have the music that you like and we don't have to worry about that. Hi, Smudge. Poor Smudgy, I'm not letting him go outside on his harness because it's so hot in the back door that I, it's way, way too hot for him. So he's a little irritated all morning and he's very very hot inside I have the fan going he's laying right in front of it yeah that's what happens when you have a, a cute little baby house that's old that does not have air conditioning so we're all gonna have to deal with it <laughs> okay I'm gonna get you to grab your weights this is gonna be balance if you want you can have the chair close to you but really it's either standing 
on that one foot completely, or you can kickstand, which means your tippy toe is on the ground. It is helping you balance, but all of your weight is on that supporting side, okay? Shoulders are back and down, core is active, your choice of kickstand or lifting it off the floor, and you're gonna bicycle up and come back down. Keep going. Two, three, try and stand tall. Four, five, don't worry about speed. Six, you do not have to keep up with me. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. We're gonna switch to the other side. So shift all of your weight to that one side. You can either kickstand or lift the foot up and go ahead. Nice and tall in the rib cage. Squeeze the shoulders back. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So your weights can go down. You will need a chair or a couch, something that is close for you here. Sitting on the edge. So today I want you to try having your hands on your shoulders. What this is going to do is get rid of that momentum you're building. If you need arm rests or you need to use your arms to come up, absolutely feel free to do so. It's just the harder version is taking your arms out of it. So the legs have to do it all. Feet are about hips distance apart. We're going to add some balance in here. I want you to stand up, kick out to the side, come back down. Stand up, kick out to the other side, and come back down. It's not a big kick. It's just the straight leg kicking out to the side. Alternating legs, don't forget that. The whole time you are trying to pull that belly button into the spine and everything else is squeezing the glutes, shoulders are back, you're in full neutral position, just adding in that extra little hip activation at the end. Four more times. Four. Three, two, and one. You're gonna grab just the one dumbbell. If you have a heavier dumbbell, feel free to use it. If you find that this hurts your neck or if you have lower back problems, you can absolutely use a lighter weight. What I want you to do is you're gonna use your chair. The free hand is gonna be on the chair. The leg that is the same side as the one holding the weight, that's the one that goes back. You have a nice bent right knee, right hand is on the chair, it's the left hand holding the dumbbell. Two separate movements. I want you to row up, but then I want you to kick back. So we're going to use the upper back and then we're going to use the triceps to finish the kick back. Okay? Try and keep a nice straight spine, core is active, squeeze the glute, and go ahead, row up, squeeze, kick back, come back down. Two, keep that front knee bent. Three, four, five, take your time with this one, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five left, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and 15. Good. So you're going to switch to the other side. Now, if you're just starting these workouts or you haven't worked out in a really long time, don't worry about keeping up pace with me. You can do 10 reps if you'd like, or 12 reps, or 15. That is up to you. The left hand is on that chair. The right leg is back because I have the weight in my right hand. Make sure you bend that front knee. I'm going to roll up and kick back, come back down, roll up, kick back, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five more times. Five, make sure you squeeze that shoulder blade when you lift up. Four, three, two, and good. Perfect. Okay, waist go down. So I want you to either 
walk on the spot or jog on the spot. Like I said, gonna be sweating today for sure if you wanna work out with me at this, in this heat. So if you're jogging on the spot, just bring those knees up nice and high, core is active, shoulders are back. If this hurts the lower back or the knees, because it's a little bit of a pounding motion, feel free to just march on the spot. So with this one, you're working on the knees, getting up a lot higher, but you can go down on the floor and a little bit easier for that impact, okay? So your choice, whatever you want. You just wanna feel out of breath, heart rate's going, get up, get up that heart rate. Five more seconds, four, three, two, and you're good. Okay, feel free to sit, have some water, catch your breath, and we're gonna do that round again. So make sure you always have something near you, whether it's a wall or a couch, but it's the kickstand that should help you quite a bit in this position. If you have balance issues, your tippy toe on the ground, all of your weight is on the supporting leg, shoulders are back and down, nice and tall, bicycle up and down. Two, you're squeezing those shoulder blades, you're squeezing that glute, four, five, Six, touch down whenever you have to. Seven, eight, nine, last time. And 10, I want you to switch to your other side. So make sure that all of your weight is on that supporting leg. You can either kickstand and hold that or just stand on the one leg, go ahead. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. You do not need your weights for this one because we're gonna be doing those sit down squats, okay? So your feet are about hips distance apart, shoulders are back. If you'd like to make it harder, we're gonna be doing hands crossed across the chest. You don't have to do that. You can absolutely use the arms if you need to, okay? You stand up, kick the leg out to the side, come back down, stand up, kick. The hardest part here is you're gonna to wanna to stay in this bent over position. Stand up tall, push those hips forward, then kick out to the side. Four. Five. You'll notice if you try to go too far, it might be a little painful. Six. So it's not a big movement. Seven. You're just activating that glute need. Eight and a little bit of balance, and that's all. Nine, 10, four more times here. Squeeze the glutes, four, three, two, and one. Good, using your chair or couch, coffee table, something that's decently low, it's about knee height, grab just the one dumbbell, the free hand goes on that chair. The same leg that has the weight, that's what goes behind you because you have to bend into this front knee and you need this space. If you had this leg forward, I'm knocking it every time because it's on the same side, okay? So that's how you know. I make a nice open area for my arm. Front knee is bent. I'm gonna row and kick back. Row and kick back. Three. Take your time with this one. Four, it's all about range of motion. Five, six, the back leg can do whatever it needs to. Seven, so if it's up like this, that's fine. Eight, or you can have a heel on the ground. Nine, five more reps. Five, four, three, two, and one. So I'm just gonna move the chair a little bit so you guys can see me. Um, if you have the space, all you're doing is flipping over to the other side. Make sure that front knee is bent, and go ahead, row, kick, 
kick back. One, two, keep your chest facing down. Three, four, five, try not to do this. Six, don't open up, keep it nice and closed. Seven, eight, nine, this forces the tricep to do all the work, which is what we want it to do. Five more reps. Five, four, three, two, and good. Perfect. Feel free to take a seat if you'd like to catch your breath, but um, we are going to be jogging on the spot. So if you find that you're feeling lightheaded, that's when you take a break. You can pause me at any time, okay? Um, and then we get back into it. So cardio is good and bad, especially in these hot days. You do want to push those limits. You want to feel out of breath. You want to be sweating. But if you go too far, then that's when you start to feel lightheaded and a little nauseous. So we don't want to be there. Marching on the spot is nicer on the joints. Or you can jog on the spot. Your choice. Core is active. Squeezing the glutes. Shoulders are back. Don't forget to breathe deep, okay? This is all about oxygen into the lungs so they can go to the muscles. The higher you are pulling the rib cage off of the stomach, the easier time you have with breathing and your core will be active. So it'll be less clunky when you are doing this movement. 10 more seconds. Deep inhale, deep exhale, and you're good. Okay, you can shake those legs out, have some water, and we do that one more time. So I'm going to grab both weights with that balancing bicep curl. Shoulders are back, squeeze those shoulders together. Core is active, that one glute is very active because you're gonna be kickstanding or lifting the other leg off the ground. And go ahead, bicep curl up and down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, last time, and 10, we're gonna switch to that other leg, make sure you find your balance, and continue, 10, nine, eight, a little bit of bend in that knee, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, good. So you put those weights aside, grabbing on to that chair for the sit down squat with the side kick. On the edge of your chair, feet are about hip distance apart, hands can be here, that's harder. Stand up, kick out to the side, and down again. So it's really important that we keep that hip mobility going, especially this movement, because we do forward and back quite often. You sit, you stand, you walk forward. We don't usually do sideways and you're only as flexible <laughs> as your least flexible range of position, which is usually this side kick motion. Try to stay up nice and tall. Don't let the torso move with you. So don't do this, okay? That wasn't me doing a side kick. That was me side bending. So it's the torso nice and straight. It's all in the legs. Four more times, four, Three, two, last time, and good. Okay, grabbing that one dumbbell, making sure you have that space in front and behind you, front knee is bent, and go ahead, you're gonna row, kick back, come back down. It's all in that tricep, three, which is the back of the arm. Four, five, pull the belly button in, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, last time, and fifteen. Good. Switching to the other side. I'm just gonna move my chair. Bending into that front knee, that's where you get your support for the lower back. And go ahead, row, kick back, come back down. Two, three, four, don't forget to breathe. Five, and keep that knee bent. Six, seven, Eight, lift that weight as high as possible. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Good. Okay, if you're feeling lightheaded, you can pause for a second, otherwise, Marching on the spot or jogging on the spot. Last time. Don't forget to breathe. You'll try to squeeze your glutes here, but it's more of a lower abdominal contraction. The glutes are kicking in sporadically, <laughs> if at all. Um, so just try and stay up nice and tall. When you stay up tall, the back, the core has to activate and that'll ricochet down into the hips a little bit. We got 15 more seconds, so keep going. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. They'll wanna come up here. Keep them down. Five, four, three, two, and you're good. Okay, have some water. You can sit down. Catch your breath if you'd like. I'm just gonna, oh, it's still coming. Uh, yeah. It just, it's like I can't get enough oxygen in because it's so hot. It's hot. All right. I just need a sprinkler system and a big fan. Ah, that would be nice. Okay. If you need the chair, feel free to have it. It's actually nice if you do have knee pain to do these reverse lunges, beautiful for strength in the knees without putting so much pressure on them that it hurts them. And it's also great for balance because you usually have something in front of you. So it doesn't actually matter what it is. A, a wall works, but there's nothing you can really hold on to. So if you have a couch or back of a chair, that's definitely better. But essentially what it is, is you're stepping back. So you're quite close to whatever you're holding on to. You're gonna take a big step, back. The problem is, is people like to go back when they're reverse lunging and instead it's a step back down motion. That's how you get that nice 90 degree angle in the front and the back knee is that the hips go straight down from this posture rather than the whole body trying to lean back onto that back knee. You can keep holding on to that chair the whole time. If you have really strong knees, Balance is great. Don't even use the chair, just do reverse lunges. They are gonna be alternating. Feet are about hips distance apart. Core is active, squeezing those glutes. Step back, depth is up to you. Come up, switch to the other leg, step back and up. So notice my torso is straight up and down the whole time. Four, five, six, as with all lunges. The lower you go, the harder it is to get out of. Eight, so if you want, you can just do this. Nine, little baby dip, like this. 10, okay, or a nice big one. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, we're going to 20 if you'd like. 17, if not, you can stop at 16 or 18 or 20. 
One last time. And you're good. Just shake out your legs. We're actually only going to do one more exercise here on the ground because I am going to do a lot of floor exercises today. Feet are about hip distance apart. This is alternating shoulder press. So I want your palms facing forward at the top of the shoulders. Bend into the knees a little bit so you can squeeze your glutes. Punch up towards the ceiling with one and then switch to the other. One, then the other. Go ahead. One, then the other. One, then the other. Two, three, four, five. This is all about range of motion. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Relax. If you do have a shoulder injury, you can just use one weight if you'd like to work that range of motion and then actually do strength on the other side. Or you can hold one dumbbell, come up into that shoulder press, and come back down. And the good arm will help the bad arm, but the bad arm will still get a little bit of strength and mobility. So it's up to you. You can do one weight, holding with both hands, one weight, punch up with one, punch up with the other, it's nice and free, or you can use both dumbbells at the same time. Your choice. We're gonna go back into those reverse lunges. So again, grabbing quite close, you're very, very close to your couch or your chair, because when you step back, you still have to come down. If you're too far away, you'll be coming forward like this, and that's not what I'm looking for, okay? So, grabbing onto something, if you're fine with balance, you're just standing nice and tall, and you step back, and up, switch to the side, down, and up. Three, keep your shoulders back. Four, depth is up to you. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You can do sixteen only, or eighteen, or twenty. This is eighteen. 19 and 20. Shake those legs out. One or two weights, your choice for that alternating shoulder press. Squeeze those glutes, palms face forward. Keep them in line with the ears. Try not to do this. You're trying to do this right alongside the ears, okay? Core is active, punch up with one and then the other. Keep going. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. Racing them down. One last time. We're doing those reverse lunges. Holding on to something or not. Don't trip on anything behind you. And go ahead. Step back and up. The more you can control the core, the more stable you'll be because this will be nice and solid. It's not going to be flopping all over the place and that'll help your legs to balance. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, you can stop at 16 if you'd like, 17, or you can stop at 18, 18, 19, and 20. Last time, shaking those legs out, and we're going to do that shoulder press. One weight or two. Feet about hip systems apart, shoulders are back and down, core is active. Make sure your palms face forward. Go ahead. One, two, squeeze those glutes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, we're gonna do a little bit, have some water, feel free to have some water. We're gonna do a little bit of stretching, mobility, range of motion in the hips before we go down onto the floor. So first I just want you to grab your chair or your couch and we're gonna do that seated cross ankle stretch. So make sure you're on the edge, crossing that right ankle over the left knee, sitting up nice and tall, and then lean forward. And that's where you really, really do feel that stretch. This needs to be ice cold and soaking wet. I'm just saying. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> okay, so nice and tall leaning forward. It feels great, honestly, to be just like nice and sweaty and it's hot and it's, we never get this. So I'm happy we have it. I'm just not used to it. I'm not complaining. I'm just not used to it. <laughs> so once you finish leaning forward, you can also, you can stay there or you can also push down on that knee, depending on how much of a stretch, but this stretch should not be comfortable. This should be on a scale from one to 10, where 10 is bad, sharp pain. You've hurt yourself. You never want to go there. You want to feel about a six or a seven on that scale. So it's not comfortable. You are pushing enough that you're like, oh, there it is. There's that, there's that stretch. That look should be on your face right now. <laughs> okay. Lean back, switch to the other side. Five on that scale or 50% is just, you know, we sit up nice and tall, you feel a little bit, you're like, oh yeah, there's that stretch. But then, deep inhale, sit up a little taller, exhale, push forward. Now you're pushing into that six or seven. It's not comfortable, okay? You have to breathe through it, breathe into it. But at the same time, it's not sharp pain, never to pain. Never to that, oh, I just pulled something, okay? You're just below that to an uncomfortable stretching level, okay? And then you breathe. So deep inhale, exhale, push forward a little bit more, relax into it. Deep inhale, exhale, push a little bit more. If you're really, really, really flexible, then you won't feel it. But generally, people at this seated uh, stretch, you're, you're definitely gonna feel something. Lean back, then release the leg. This next one is a little bit of balance. You're definitely gonna need your chair. If it's your couch, make sure wall's beside you. We're gonna do two separate movements on the same leg. What I want you to do is you are going to put your right leg on the chair, toe pointing up, the opposite hand, so it's my right leg, my left hand is reaching forward. So in this position, you might only get to here and that is it, that's as far as it'll go. That's okay, as long as your knee doesn't look like this. I want the knee to be straight, the toe pointing up, then you reach across the body and come forward. You might have the thigh, might only reach the knee, maybe you can't get past the shin, or you're pulling that toe towards you. Whatever your flexibility is at on that scale, from one to 10, it should feel a seven. Not comfortable at all. You do have to breathe into it and feel all those muscles stretch and then relax into the stretch. Very, very gently. I want the torso to come up. Keep your foot there. Now I want you to bend the knee. So the bottom of the foot actually is on the chair. The knee is bent and then you're gonna lean forward into it. So if you can grab the chair, that's fine. Otherwise, my hand is on the wall to support me. And as you push forward with the hip, you're gonna get a big, big stretch in that quad, the front of the leg, and the bent knee. You might feel it in the knee or the hip or the, the glute, okay? So it's pushing forward, and then you can release down. I'm gonna switch the chair around. I suggest that you do too if you have a chair, just so that you can use the wall for support, okay? You're gonna have that leg facing straight up. Inhale nice and tall, reaching forward towards that leg. I'm just gonna switch legs here. Yeah, there we go. That one hasn't been stretched out yet. <laughs> so make sure it's your opposite leg. The leg you have not stretched, make sure it's that one that you're stretching here. 
breathing into it with every exhale. So if you start here, deep inhale, and when you exhale, reach a little bit further. Deep inhale, exhale, reach a little bit further. So you're always going forward, forward, forward towards the foot or twisting into like a chest stretch, anything like that. Breathing into a deeper stretch with those muscles. Your torso comes up first, bend into that front knee. The bottom of the foot is definitely on the chair. It's there to support you because the hips now are going to come forward. So in this position, that leg that's on the ground, you'll probably feel that hip flexor stretch a little bit, which is fine. You might feel the hamstring of the bent knee or the, the joints themselves. You might feel the knee joint or the hip joint. That's fine. Don't fall over, find your balance. Use that leg that's bent to push back so that you can bring that foot down to the ground. Okay, have a little bit of water. Don't forget your weights. We're gonna go down onto the floor. I'm just gonna move the chair out of the way so that you guys can see me. And we are gonna be doing chest and core and back exercises today. So I'm gonna get you on the floor. If you need to use the chair, absolutely. Go over to the chair, use it to come down to a kneeling position and then make your way down onto your back with your weights. That's totally fine. When you do end up on the ground, your feet will be about hip distance apart, facing straight ahead. The knees are bent. I want you to squeeze those glutes and push that lower back into the floor. So this is all in a neutral position. Grabbing onto those weights. You're going to push those weights up towards the ceiling and we're going to be doing normal chest fly. So the palms face each other. So when you flare out, the elbows touch the ground, never the weights. You never want the dumbbells to touch the floor, but the elbows are on the ground and then you bring them back up towards the ceiling. Squeeze that glute as much as possible and push, push, push that core down. So that is always active. You are contracting as hard as you can and then the chest fly is just a secondary thing, okay? So you concentrate on the glutes and the core first, and then you can continue on with the chest fly. You can fiddle around with this range of motion as well if you'd like. The further you go down, the harder it is on the biceps, but just make sure you never touch the dumbbell down to the floor because that means your elbow is completely straight, and we do not want that. Don't want you to hurt yourself. And try to keep that elbow to come down alongside the shoulder, not down like this. So you are in line with the shoulder when you touch down with the elbow and then bring the weight back up towards the ceiling. And you're good. Those weights can come down to the floor. We're going to be doing cross crunches, two separate versions of those. You can just do the, the one-sided cross crunch where you cross that opposite elbow towards the opposite knee put it back down on the ground, and then you lift to the other side and put that down on the ground, or your feet are in the air the whole time. This is definitely harder because when you cross crunch, the other leg goes straight out, and then you switch. So your choice, ready, set, go ahead. Cross, 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 cross. Keep it nice and slow, three, four, five, six, seven, break when you have to, eight, nine, and ten. Relax the head and the feet. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Tuck the shoulders underneath you. We're going to be doing a bridge hip lift. So once you walk those heels as close as you can towards your butt, your feet are still about hip distance apart, facing straight ahead. I want you to lift those hips up, squeeze the glutes, and then come back down. This is about range of motion. Come up as high as you can and come back down. Beautiful for the lower back to keep arthritis at bay because we are forcing extension in the spine, but it's in a safe and effective manner. And your glutes are there to protect you because now you can squeeze them quite nicely. That's, this is their job, is hip extension. So use them as much as you can. 
five, four, three, two, and one. Straighten both of your legs and then rock your feet side to side and that'll just loosen up all the muscles that have tightened up. I don't want you to have a charley horse in your hamstring or anything like that. When you're done, you can have the feet back on the ground. Knees are bent, grabbing onto your weights. So we're back to the chest fly. Squeeze, anchor, hold all of that. Lifting the weights up, palms facing each other, and flirt out. Down and up. So it should be tricky to breathe because you're contracting the core so much, the lower abdominals, that you're breathing through the rib cage a little bit more than the stomach. And you're also working on depth with those dumbbells. A few more, six more times. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Those weights can come down beside you. If you're doing the modified cross crunch, you can even do it halfway through. So if you start with those feet in the air and you're doing cross crunches and your back starts to not like that position, you can put the feet on the ground and modify it to the half crunch at any time. Okay? Ready? Hands behind the head. Set. Go ahead. Cross. 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 Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Keep going. 13, 14, last time, and good. Breathe. I thought the first set, way too little cross crunches. We can do more. <laughs> so if you're like, Tanya, Tanya, why did you keep going? Sorry about that. Sorry about that. You can stop whenever it's comfortable, take a break, and then continue. Walk those heels nice and close to your butt, and do make sure that you have the, the shoulders tucked underneath you because you want a nice flat surface for the upper back so when you do the bridge hip lift nothing's on your neck you should feel no pressure at all okay down and then up squeeze those glutes and come down three four five the more you can isolate the glutes and the hamstrings the better seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, last time, and good. Straighten out those legs, rock your feet side to side to loosen up all those muscles, and we're going to do this one more time. All right, the knees are bent, squeeze the glutes. Push that lower back into the floor. Contract as hard as you can. Keep that contraction. Don't forget to breathe. Lift the weights up towards the ceiling, palms facing each other. And go ahead. Down, chest light up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't forget to breathe. Seven, pull the belly button. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Bring those weights down towards the ground, breathing deep. Try the cross crunches. Modify down if you have to. Hands behind your head, lifting the feet up, and cross, cross. Cross, it's not fast. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Break when you have to or modify. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, last one here, and relax. Breathe, breathe, breathe through the belly. You can rock your knees side to side if you'd like, just to loosen up those abdominals. One last one here, those bridge hip lifts. So I want those heels nice and close, shoulders tucked under, hands by your hips, Squeeze the glutes, a little bit of a pelvic tuck. So your tailbone will be like this, and I want you to pelvic tuck in. Keep it like that. Lift up, squeeze, come back down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Straighten out those legs, rock your feet side to side, breathing deep. Ah, good. Okay, so I'm just gonna move these weights out of the way. While we're on our backs, we're gonna do those knee twists because it's a great, great stretch. If you ever hurt your back, hurt your shoulder, you're feeling tight in the hips, tight in the spine, you're driving for a long, long time, standing for a really long time, the knee twists are the ones that they decompress everything. It's nice and safe. Arms go out into a capital T position. If you have hurt your back and it's really, really nasty, you can do something very subtle. Your knees are a little bit straight, a little bit bent, and you simply drop to the side and then you can switch to the other side. So this is a, a, a much more modified kind of a twist where it's not too much for the back, but you'll still get a little bit of a stretch. If you just want the normal stretch that we always do, I do want your feet up in the air. The knees are bent because your feet, when you drop down, drop down a lot higher and you get a much bigger twist in the hips and the back when you do it this way. Deep inhale. And when you exhale, you want the hips to stack on top of each other. And when your hips stack, your knees stack. They might just look like this. So with every exhale, you push forward, push forward, push forward until they're down to the ground. The other thing I want you to concentrate on is that opposite shoulder. So I'm twisting to the right, it's my left shoulder blade. I'm trying to push down towards the floor. Deep inhale and exhale, push the hips forward. Press the shoulder blade down. Breathing nice and deep. Keep the feet on the ground, core is active. Very, very gently come back to center. We're gonna switch to the other side. So once you're at the center, then you lift the knees back up and you're gonna drop those feet over to the left. Deep inhale. And exhale, push forward. Inhale. And exhale, twist that upper spine so the shoulder blade can be down on the floor a little bit more. One side, if you're not equal, will be a lot tighter and you'll feel just not natural at all. The other side will just go over like butter, no problem. The other side will be stiff and a little bit nasty. So if you want to go back to that side after the stretch, feel free to do so. Okay, it just needs a little bit more tender loving care. Feet are on the ground, come back to center. I want you to finish off with the knees coming in towards the chest, breathing deep. And you're gonna roll over onto your stomach. So in this position, we're gonna be doing happy, happy back extension. As always, with back extension, the one time I ask you not to squeeze your glutes, that's when they wanna squeeze. So 
few things here. The heels hopefully will drop outward. It might be more natural that the heels drop in. That's fine. Relax the legs. That's the point. Elbows will come right beside your rib cage. Relax the head down to the floor. I want you to lift the head up, pull the shoulders away from the ears, and you should feel your lower back contract, not the glutes. If your heels lift up like this, now I'm using my glutes. Don't do that. Drop the legs. Relax the butt and come back down. Lift up, feel the arch in the back, breathe into it and relax. Lifting up, shoulders pulling away from the ears. And relax. Two more times, lifting up, breathe, release, and then one last time, coming up, and relax. I want your hands to come underneath your shoulders. You're going to push yourself up, wide stance with the knees, feet coming together, and you're going to push back into child's pose. So your hands will crawl forward while you're trying to push your hips back towards your heels. On your exhale, push the chest a little bit lower towards the ground. Breathing through the belly. Hands are going to come underneath your shoulders to help push you up to this kneeling position. Now in the kneeling position, you can bring your knees closer together. This might be very uncomfortable for the hips and the ankles and the knees, so it might look more like this, and that's okay. If you have to do that, definitely feel free to do so. Otherwise, you're sitting up nice and tall. You want as much flexion in the knee and the hip as possible. Shoulders, roll it back and down a couple times. If you need to use the chair, feel free to crawl over to a chair and use it. Otherwise, just make sure you get one foot underneath you so that you can use it to stand up. Whew. Okay. Have some water if you'd like. Our last couple stretches, chest stretch and calf stretch. We're going to do the calf stretch first. A wall is best for sure, but I'm just going to show you here on the couch because then you can have a better view of what my foot's doing. The toe is as high as possible on the wall. The knee is straight and I want the hip bones, not your head. I don't want the head to touch the wall. I want the hip bone to come forward so that you feel that stretch in the back of the leg, in your calf, in the arch area a little bit, maybe in your toes, breathing into it. And then switching to your other side. So I will go on to the wall this time. The, the left foot, it's as high as possible, the heel's on the ground, the knee is straight, and you're going to push forward, getting your hip towards the wall. It doesn't have to touch the wall, but with every exhale, you're trying to get it towards the wall. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. And you can release. This next one, just a normal chest stretch. It is going to be with a 90 degree angle in the elbow though. So you're facing the wall. That right hand has a 90 degree angle in the elbow. And then you're going to externally rotate away from the wall. So your shoulder may or may not touch. It depends on the flexibility of the chest. You're trying to push the shoulder towards the wall. But the body, the hips, the feet are trying to externally rotate away from it. And that's where you're going to get that nice deep stretch. If you're not feeling it, rotate back towards the wall, go up a little bit higher and try it again. And that should make it quite a bit deeper of a stretch. When you're done, you face the wall, release the arm, switch to the other side, 90 degree angle in the elbow and externally rotate away from it. Push that shoulder towards the wall. Externally rotate the body on every exhale. If 
face the wall and shake out the hands. Good. Well, hopefully uh, you have a basement that you can work out in. <laughs> or, you know, you have air conditioning in your house. That is also a really, really nice thing to have. Otherwise, um, like I said, make sure you do drink lots of water regardless. Make sure that you have um, a towel or something to, to dry up your, your sweaty, sweaty face. <laughs> Hopefully you are. I mean, that's the point. You want to sweat in these boot camps. You want to burn calories. You want to gain strength. And you just want to, yeah, be healthy, be flexible. So I hopefully, I hope that you enjoyed it. And um, I'll be seeing you guys next week, hopefully live. It'll be a super fun time. Um, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy this hot, hot weather. And I'll see you again soon sometime. Bye for now.